Welcome back to Chicago Cars Direct. Today we're gonna to spend some time with a car we've never seen before. This is a 2002 Dodge Viper GTS. Supercharged. Under the hood here, you're gonna find the familiar eight liter V10 that's uh, standard in the Viper at 450 horsepower. Uh, you know, decent sized engine at eight liters, I'd say. Uh, it is 10 cylinder, it's all aluminum block. Uh, it takes up most of the front of the car, but this particular example is a supercharge example. They do have a Paxton supercharger that was put onto the front along with a uh, intercooler and intake system, but it adds a lot of torque to a engine that already has a lot of torque. The mid-range response is unreal. You can't hear the supercharger, which a guy like me, I actually prefer in a car like this because they did some other custom stuff as far as the exhaust, but uh, as all Vipers come, it's a six-speed manual transmission routed to the rear wheels. But this is the GTS. They do call this the final edition because in 2002 was the last year of this body style, which is, while it's considered the first generation body style, it's considered the second generation by engineering. Uh, it's just a really stunning car. I still think this is one of the most amazing cars. Uh, when you see one on the road, it looks like nothing else. Uh, at any dollar point. Just one of the coolest. But let's walk around it because it's been very well cared for, babied in a way, and then uh, I get to take it for a spin. If you know the Viper Marketplace, a lot of them tend to be uh, ridden hard and put away wet, I guess. I don't know what the hell that even means, but uh, just taking a look at this, I mean, the, the overall condition should speak volumes of these cars, and they did have a uh, original lower uh, cone on here that was that actually we still have, but we did take off because it really doesn't... Uh, add to any drivability. You gotta take it off, you can't clear any bumps, so we actually did take it off, but the front end looks excellent. Um, there's really no stone chips, nothing along those lines. The stripes, everything from the factory is, is excellent. Uh, coming around to the side here, you can see the hood has an additional scoop on here that was added by the original owner, uh, and the GTS does have vents and the intake in the middle there. Uh, this is the stock factory chrome wheel with a brand new set of Michelin Pilot Sport tires. Now, this tire on the front here, these are pretty large. This is a 250, I'm sorry, 275. 35ZR18 in the front, uh, chrome, excellent condition. They did replace the stock Viper lettering with a chrome mirrored style lettering. Uh, and it does have the, as they call it, the gills in the side there. But look at the reflection through there. Those curves are amazing. You don't see a lot of cars with those curves yesterday or today. Uh, you do have the custom side pipes. They did install side pipes for a little bit more performance exhaust. As you'll see on the rear, the cutouts are still there, but the passenger side is excellent. The wheel on the back here is a 335-30ZR18, uh, brand new Michelin Pilot Sports, uh, again as well. And this is the correct tire for this car, but beautiful chrome wheels. Uh, you can see in the back, they did put a custom uh, stereo in there. We'll take a closer look at that. Uh, the rear end is excellent. You can see on the lower part of the bumper, the cutouts are still there for where the stock exhaust was, obviously being changed to a side pipe setup. This is the Hennessy style rear wing. They do say this is very functional at the 180 plus mile an hour mark, which is why you see a lot of the high horsepower Vipers with the uh, very similar wing, if not the identical one. Uh, Viper GTS badging on the lower part of the bumper there, but the passenger side follows suit. You can see the brushed aluminum fuel cap here. And also the added roof scoop. Not necessarily functional just for design, but the Passenger side is uniform, just like the driver. Vipers do have adequate uh, storage room in the rear. This one, actually, this gentleman put in, and he did a very good job. I don't know who, who put this in, but you've got twin uh, V12 Alpine amps here uh, for the front. They actually put some pretty expensive components back here, but you've got one huge Alpine sub back here, uh, as well as component speakers in the rear deck. But perfectly clean, brand new condition, unmolested. I mean, it's, this car's never been wrecked and rebuilt or anything like that, which is a huge compliment to the previous owner. Look at the door, everything's stock here except for the stereo upgrade. They did put a uh, mid-range uh, Boston acoustic set of uh, speakers in here, so you get your mid, your tweeter, and uh, your woofer for the front. But the interior really is beautiful. These Viper seats tend to wear, and it doesn't really have any. These bolsters, you'll usually see some wear if they've been daily drivers, but this is an O2 with 7,000 miles. These aren't really a car that you would drive daily, although you could, because they really are pretty reliable. But uh, I'll jump in here. Definitely a more snug cockpit than most, 
But the uh, steering wheel, you got tilt wheel here. Everything falls right at uh, right at your hands. It's really a driver's car. It wraps around you. You do feel as if you sit up front, but the hood has three distinct humps that go right over. And to really drive this car hard and to place it on a racetrack, it's pretty fun. You're sitting just in front of the rear wheels, and with that kind of torque, you can really drive it as if you're sitting in the back seat. Um, they've always been one of my favorites because there's just it's the, almost the most absurd car for the road, but that's really what its intention was when they built this thing. Pretty simple layout. I mean, you've got all your functional necessities in here. Uh, really interesting gauge layout. You've got white face gauges with like an orange backlight when they're lit up, but during the daytime it's black on white. You can see these gauges here uh, individually. They tell you all of your very important metrics, but they changed this whole interior for the 97 model GTS and they carried it through till the end. And there is a little badge here. It does say Viper GTS Final Edition. It does say 350 out of that. I'm not sure how many they made in that run. But this is your head unit for the unbelievable stereo system. Probably one of the most intricately placed stereo systems in a small uh, sports car. Uh, but you do have power windows, you do have uh, remote power locks, as well as a six-speed manual here with a uh, shift that's really not that bad. And these really are comfortable seats. I've, I've spent a lot of time in Vipers before and I've taken them on long trips before. They get decent fuel economy on the street depending you know how, how hard you're hitting that go button. But uh, nice and easy to drive. They're really very, very civil cars, but when you want to move, holy cow, look out. These things will always move. And that supercharger, that's got to add a lot of stuff to it. Sound. That goes for Lamborghini, Ford's got a V10, these guys have a V10, and BMW's got a V10. They all have a very distinct characteristic sound to them, uh, just unlike any other. Not like a V8, not like a V12. But I mean, with the extra power in this car, I wasn't really thinking the supercharger setup at first was going to be the best setup, but what a great smooth way to put extra power down in a car that was super powerful to begin with. In my hand here I have a copy of the Carfax and AutoCheck Vehicle History Reports. Now Carfax reporting it as a one owner car. 
Uh, Auto Check shows that as a do owner card, but it really is just that they had retitled it. You know, they could do that when they move or anything along those lines, but uh, it still stayed in the custody. You'll see because of the uh, history events on there. But uh, squeaky clean, no previous accident history. And you really got to be careful when you're buying these cars and make sure that they don't have a, a bad history. There's a lot of Vipers out there that have been either wrecked on a racetrack or the street. They get put back together. And these are one of those cars that you wreck it once. It's never going to be the same thing again. But uh, check out more than 60 pictures of this on our website. You're going to find us at chicagocarsdirect.com. Or check out our YouTube channel with highlights of some of our other unreal cars like this Dodge Viper. You'll find us at youtube.com slash chicagocarsdirect. Thanks for going for a ride. This really made my weekend. We'll see you soon.